See, the narcissist wants to be like the past in the past. That argument that we had five minutes ago, that's in the past. That argument we had 20 years ago, that's in the past. Like we're not gonna bring that up again because we don't wanna be accountable or responsible for the things that we've done. A lot of times narcissists look always towards the next best thing. And the problem is in a lot of relationships, the next best thing is the next woman or the next guy. And they keep going from person to person. They keep going from relationship to relationship, from job to job, all different types of places, all different types of things, because they're never satisfied. They're never happy or content with the place where they're at, with the person that they are, with the person that they're with, with the job they're at. It's always, what about more? What about more? And a lot of times when we talk about narcissism, you'll hear in reference like the void or you'll hear in reference like the idea that something's missing inside. And a lot of times that idea of even what's missing inside is being able to engage in love or in happiness or in joy or in gratitude and being able to see other levels of being, of actually participating in life and not just doing things to life. If you guys are new here, my name is Ben Taylor. I'm a self-aware narcissist on this channel to provide awareness, growth, healing, and change. And I do that in a couple different ways by producing free content everywhere on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn. If you're listening on the podcast, like and review, but we're on Amazon Music, we're on Apple, Spotify, all different types of places. If you haven't had a chance to follow on any of those platforms, then just look up Raw Motivations. We're on all the channels as Raw Motivations. We'd love to have you follow, interact with the community there. We've been developing over the past couple of months a community of like-minded people, and that's with the NARC app. It stands for Narcissistic Abuse Recovery Community. Just type in NARC into Apple Store or Google Play, and you can download it right there. It's a great place to be able to learn just what narcissism is. Like learn what the nine points, the nine traits of narcissism are, and how you have to have five to be diagnosed, but learn what they are. If you're if you're wondering, hey, am I a narcissist? Check that out. Maybe you'll have an idea of like, hey, I might not be a narcissist, but I might have this toxic trait that I need to work on. And that's okay. Look on the app because we've got courses on there. We've got a place for you to interact with community, to ask advice, to to get encouragement, to get friends in there that are actually going to help lift you up and help you through this trying and crucial time of figuring out, wait, what is this? What's actually going on? We also have a place where you can track your no contact. That is accountability to keep coming back to the app and saying, hey, I'm still staying strong with what I intend to do to keep myself safe, to keep my kids safe. Like I'm still going to do that. We can engage every week with weekly lives or the monthly coaching where we bring in coaches from all across the globe to try to help people, not just in the aspect of narcissism, but then what's next? How do we grow? How do we heal? How do we change? How do we put up boundaries? How do we develop good habits, good triggers to keep us moving forward? If that's you, download the NARC app. Just type in NERC. Would love to talk to you. If you want to interact with me, like one-on-one, would love to interact with you. Um, I do one-on-ones uh, with people all over the country. Uh, would love to be able to get on a Zoom call, be able to talk to you. You can check that out under rawmotivations.com. My main goal is just to help bring you clarity. Bring you clarity from the confusion and the crazy making that happens when you're with a narcissist. Well, a lot of times when you're with a narcissist, you'll notice, hey, they don't seem to ever be content like not really like happy. It's like always like constantly going. Maybe maybe they just have to have the next job or they, they can't stay in jobs and there's like a cycle or we have to have the next house or more money or, or different relationships and they move from person to person to person. And a lot of times you see that in the relationship because they're looking for something, right? Like they're looking to fill a void that can't be filled by another person because they're ignoring a lot of aspects of life that if they take a moment, be honest with who they were, be honest with what's going on and actually observe and take a different perspective of life, they'd be able to realize what I'm missing, I can actually have, but I'm too busy consuming. I'm too busy feeling my ego boost. I'm too busy trying to be grandiose and entitled and envious and all these type of things. I'm too busy doing all this to actually take a moment and realize what a gift of life I actually have. You see, when you're you're with a narcissist, a lot of times you'll notice that their standards are moving. They're constantly moving the goalpost. And you try to make the goalpost. You try to meet the goal of like, okay, they they want me to be more present, so I'm more present. And then they're not there. They want me to be more loving, so I'm more loving. And then they're not there. They want me to be, you know, whatever it might be. They want me to do this a certain way or do that a certain way. And you try to meet all these goals and, and legalities that a lot of times a narcissist says, like, you have to do this, or you have to do this, or why don't you love me because you don't do this, or all these different types of things. And what happens is you get there and you're like, let me meet the goal. 
then all of a sudden you realize, oh, like, I, I didn't realize that, that was the goal. And you start moving up, oh, and the goal moves. Because a narcissist will always keep moving the goal to the next thing. The reason why is because they want to keep stringing you along and keep you stuck in the relationship and not admit who they actually are or what they're struggling with. Think of it this way. If the narcissist said, hey, this is the level of perfection that you need to be at, just right here, this level, like just, just do these couple things correctly and, and it'll be perfect, okay? And then you, you, you make your way up there and you meet that level. And you realize, hey, everything is perfect. Like I did everything that I was supposed to do. Every single thing on the list that I, you wanted in the relationship, I've done. Now I'm here. What happens? The narcissist always moves it up. Why? Because if we left it down here, okay? So as a narcissist, if I left it down here and the person met my standards, then I would still realize that the void is still there. I would still realize that I still feel like shit. I would still realize that the relationship still has issues. And if you're meeting everything that I'm telling you to do, and I'm like the right person, I'm like the, the person that knows everything, right? Like if you're meeting everything I'm telling you to do, and it's not fixing the problem, then that means I'm the problem. And that's not a reality that I want to sit with. It's not a reality I can handle. Because that reality brings up guilt, and it brings up shame about who I actually am. So it's a lot easier to say, no, like you actually didn't do it right. No, that's not what I said. That's not how I wanted it. And I keep moving the bar more and more and more. So I avoid the person inside. A lot of times you'll have a narcissist that's looking at the grass being greener on the other side. Maybe that's an aspect of cheating. Sometimes in the aspect of investing or gambling or starting up a new business or a different venture or getting more cars or whatever it might be. Like it's always like greener on the other side. Like let me go for this because a lot of times the narcissist wants to go for something that's easy. Like this is a lot easier than putting in this work. This is a lot easier than, you know, having to put in these hours. This is a lot easier than having to put in this investment or whatever it might be. And a lot of times they look for the easy way, the entitled way. But the grass is being greener on a lot, of, a lot of times we focus on cheating. It's one of the big ways that we talk about it of like, I'm not getting my needs met here, so I'm going to jump the fence and go get it with someone else. Like, I'm not being served, so I'm going to go be with someone else who will serve me. That's ultimately the thought process and the idea. You're not being loving enough. You're not being respectful enough. You're not giving me enough sex, like whatever it might be. So I'm going to go get it from someone else. I'm going to, I'm going to take my toys and I'm going to say, I'm going to go play with someone else because I don't want to actually put in the work to invest in a relationship. Because if I have to invest in the relationship, that means I have to change myself. And that's not something I want to do. In my relationship with my wife, that was something that I was always opposed to. It was always her fault. It was always someone else's fault. It was my job's fault. It was person's fault. But it wasn't an accountability that I would take for myself. It was always easier just to jump to the next person, the next thing, than it was to sit in the muck and say, hey, I actually caused this. Like, this was actually an issue that I did. A lot of times, the narcissist will go to the next step. They'll look for the next thing because they've already started to devalue. They've already started to tear you down. And typically, when they start tearing you down, it's because you're no longer serving the purpose that the narcissist intends for you. So that might be like being a great model for everybody else to see what a great family you are, acting a certain way in front of public, acting a certain way in front of family, giving, giving them what they want in terms of money or sex or validation, anything like that. And when that starts to change or when they start to change that mindset, they're like, you know what, you're no longer serving my purpose. So like, I'm going to look for something next. I'm going to look for the next thing that's going to help me feel better about myself. The next thing that's going to cover up the shame, the next thing. So I don't have to own up what's actually going on here. A lot of times people struggle with like, how in the world do they do that? Well, there's a thing called black and white thinking that a lot of times nurses have and a lot of times they struggle with. And that's the idea of just switching it in their mind of whatever you do ends up being all bad or all good. So think of it, you do 99 things good and then you mess up in one area, all bad. None of the good ever existed. This is how they like shut it off and twist it around. Like none of that ever existed. Like you betrayed me right now. So like the past 10 years of your faithfulness means nothing. Like you did this to me right now. So the past bit of whatever time we've had together is means absolutely nothing. Forget it. And they switch that idea from black and white thinking of you're either all good or all bad. And only it takes one of those to completely change the atmosphere and to change the perspective. And then they'll go ahead and be like, all right, I'm moving out, I'm moving on. A lot of times the narcissist wants to keep moving forward. 
They want to keep moving forward so that they never have to look back. You see, moving forward gives us a sense of direction and purpose, while moving back has the idea of self-reflection, of actually admitting, hey, this is what's going on. This is who I actually was. This is the stuff that's left in the wake of my abuse. And when a narcissist has to actually look in the back and acknowledge the things that they've gone through, the things that they've been through, the people that they put through the ringer of how awful they've been to other people, they actually have to sit in the shame. And that feels impossible. Because the shame of who I am feels greater than any small pain of gaslighting someone else or manipulating someone else so that I can avoid being impacted by the shame that I have in my life. See, the narcissist wants to be like the past in the past. That argument that we had five minutes ago, that's in the past. That argument we had 20 years ago, that's in the past. Like We're not going to bring that up again because we don't want to be accountable or responsible for the things that we've done. And so it's just moving on, moving on. Moving on as fast as we can to be able to focus on the future, ignore the present, and ignore the past, and focus on what's next. Because if I'm always showing you what's next, then you're never looking at what is. Because oftentimes with a narcissist, what is is pretty awful. But the future fake to get you going to the next thing, and the next thing, and the next thing, makes you think maybe this relationship has potential. And that's when a narcissist traps you. And that's when a narcissist controls you. Now, I know it's not across the board. Every single narcissist looks forward to the next thing. A lot of them do. Some of them don't. Maybe you might relate. Maybe this is something that you realize, hey, this actually matches up to a friend of mine or their spouse and give it a share. Let people know because you might be the dealer of hope to someone else who actually realizes I'm not crazy, but I'm just stuck in a toxic relationship. <laughs>